Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. It is Saturday, the 27th, I believe I'm correct, of October 2018. Today, as our special guest, we have Ruth, also known as Safira. Uh, she's been a longtime member of Human Colony, and uh, we'll give her an interview in just a moment. Uh, just to uh, give some little housekeeping things about what's going on in Human Colony. On Fridays, we have the free channeling class that's free for everyone to join. And you can go to Facebook and look up Hukalo Channeling Workshop or Hukalo Channeling Class and you'll find it. You can join it. It's free to join. It's every Friday and it's run by Ian. And then on Wednesdays, Ruth, you're going to have to unmute yourself now. On Wednesdays, we have the Hukalo Workshop uh, get to together the hangout that uh, that Ruth runs. Why don't you tell everyone about that real quick? She's also our channel, but don't jump ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. So hello, everybody. So Wednesday, I started after I attended the Danceville workshop, which was awesome. And there was a lot to process afterwards. Uh, it was great. So I thought I would set up a a regular meeting for those from the workshop to be able to meet and talk about what they experienced and just get together and be together. Uh, however, it's morphed into more people coming who are not in the workshop, but a very beautiful, deeply spiritual group. It's wonderful. So that's Wednesdays, and I may split that into two. So if people from the workshop or a lot of new people want to come, I may split that into two separate meetings. Uh, but at the moment, it's Wednesdays at PM New York time. Thank you. Okay, cool. So that's Wednesdays. And then also on Saturdays, there's been some calls for people if they want to hang out after the actual webinar and talk about um, what was going on in the webinar. We'll see how it goes. It depends on how many people are here, but we'll just hang out, have some coffee, maybe eat something and talk to each other about what's going on. So there's lots of other things going on. Also coming up on the 10th and the 11th of November, uh, Jim and Wendy, Will and Angie will channel and speak light languages and present the truth about light. These were downloads that they had uh, with the exception of Wendy who wasn't there, but she was there in spirit. Uh, the information they got when they were in Machu Picchu, they'll be channeling Elijah, Melchizedek, Athos, emissaries of the Light Collective and various archangels and maybe more. Uh, you can go to uh, hukalo.org and just a couple hours and you can get that information. Also, it's going to be posted on the Hukalo uh, main group and all the other different Hukalo groups. So look for that. Um, but that will take place on Saturday, or excuse me, yes, Saturday, uh, November 10th and 11th, and it starts 3 p.m. EST. So I'm just trying to see if there's any other thing else. Uh, the, co uh, the cost of the class is 111 USD. And you can uh, you can get the information to to sign up for it on the website. So, okay, let me get to you, Ruth. Back to you. So, Ruth, how do we? Yes, how do you want us to call you? Because you you go by a couple different names, you know. I know. So, I know. It's a long story. I was born Rory. I changed my name to Ruth when I was twenty five because nobody ever got Rory straight. So. Yeah. Everybody got Ruth pretty Gilmore quickly. We, we had yeah. the Gilmore Girls. Everyone would have known. Okay. Yeah. I, well, yeah. But I predated the Gilmore Girls by a few years. And um, I was in Hawaii in 2008. Hmm. I to Hawaii. And I was talking with a woman who was a contactee. She had a lot of amazing things going on in her life. And she was explaining how she got her name from the book of Lyra, or Le the Delirian book of names. And I was sitting there and I asked, I said, well, what would my name be? And boom, within seconds, I got the name Sephira, which means vessel of God. So I prefer Sephira. In my professional work, I use Ruth or Rory. So yes. Okay. So today we'll call you Sephira then. Yes, please. Thank okay. you. All right. Because <laughs> I want to be a vessel. Especially yeah. To so, so tell yeah. us because people, you've been in human colony since the beginning, really, the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, 
So, but for you, did you come in already channeling? Did you start channeling when you came in Human Colony? How did that work out? What was what's really your story and your journey to channeling? I began. Sorry. I became. I was okay. I was a became a born again Christian at eighteen, mm -hmm. and we would go to all night prayer vigils. And I began channeling then, although I wouldn't have called it channeling. It was called the gift of interpreting tongues. Yeah. So they were words of knowledge. Somebody would, yes. Yeah, so somebody would speak something in another language. I would interpret it, but I was very, very shy. And it was, it was like a tremendous feat for me to do it. I would feel this fountain in the middle of my stomach bubbling and I would hear the words speak. And I'm like, um, no, I can't. I'm, I was, I, the, the fountain got, the pressure got so big that it just kind of like out of me like that. I didn't have any choice at that point. And then I would give this message and it would be like my children. It was a really deep voice and a big message. And afterwards, everybody's looking like, how did that come out of <laughs> this shy girl, you know? Yeah. So I actually started, but I had, didn't do it anymore. I mean, I use, I've been in spiritual movements or religious movements for years. So I have prayed and I have felt spirits around me, some good, some not so good. I've been touched, I've been spoken to. I, so I suppose, I always say that we all channel every time we talk to someone and we're sharing ideas, especially if they're ideas of a higher uh, ideal and value, then mm -hmm. I, that's also channeling. But I didn't really come into the idea of um, channeling myself in this way until I met Human Colony. Of course, I read the books of um, Seth, but I did start reading the books of Seth when I was in my early 20s. And that was from Jane Roberts, and that was channeling. And that the information in there was so amazing, but way beyond my belief system. So I kind of put it aside for a while. Yeah. So I came to Human Colony in, um, I think, the middle of 2014, or late 2013. And this is when Max was first having his meetups on um, Skype. <laughs> and yeah, then it kind of morphed into the YouTube group. And yes, so I channeled a lot at that time. And I stopped for a while. It's been a few years. And one reason I went to the workshop in Dansville, New York was to kind of kickstart that that again in myself and it did channeling regularly since then it's about a few months but it's um you know i'm not jim yet i had i kept at it had i kept at it i would be jim now in female form as far as channeling goes but i didn't so <laughs> but it's okay I'm starting now one shares I their truth in the time that they're supposed to share it so yeah you know. It's, yeah. it's all in good time. I, I have a question, yeah. though. Maybe I don't know if you thought about it, but how did the messages you were getting, like when you were in church, how are they? Could you do you do you think that they're the same that you would give out now? I mean, do, do, are they the same? Were the messages definitely more Christian oriented or was it st was it a more universal message than, say, uh, yeah the than what we that's would a good question remember. do you know what i mean can you yeah. remember or no because i was in i went to a christian church and i remember there was a woman that used to all of a sudden and she did Whoa! you know it was just all these big messages some oh. of them were some of them were pretty uh yeah some of them were pretty much like you guys better clean up your act or you know things are going to go really far uh, but other yeah that could have love messages. that could have Yes, um, that's a really good question. Were you on Long Island? Maybe that was me, and that we and you were there. <laughs> no, I was in South Carolina, so no. But oh, okay. Oh, yeah, all right. Church that wasn't me. Yeah. yeah. Well, they were very, they were very powerful messages. Um, it was God talking. I remember that because uh, He would say "Your Father" and things like that, and often. You know, love, love talking about how much there is love, but also usually mission, you know, to sort of 
serve and you know get deeper into a relationship with God. Paraphrasing, I don't remember the exact words now, but and it seems like the channelings I do now because I've done several written channelings and I posted them online. One more second. Let me just mute. Okay, he's muted. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, I've done a lot of written channelings recently and they seem also to be encouraging and full of love, but also also admonitions, you know, to to serve and to to serve. <laughs> to take yeah. what we're learning and do it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times they're a call to action, I know for sure. So yeah. you, you channel now, and you're channeling, you channel many beings. Um, some you channel more often than others, but who are you channeling, or who are, who are you channeling, say, first? And who are you channeling now? Maybe you can give that sort of timeline. Uh, that's hard to say. Uh, recently, I, I used to channel Arusha. She's a blue Pleiadian from Rakesh's planetary system. He's a very joyful, loving, amazing being, and she's blue, <laughs> with blue blonde hair, sort of like a My Little Pony kind of look. <laughs> I remember meeting her once in a dream, and she said to me, she said to me, she goes, oh, you're beautiful, and she said, where'd you get the goods? <laughs> it was so cute, <laughs> like trying to use, um, you know, human, human jingo, it was uh -huh. so cute. Yeah. Uh, so she's come through, and then there's Rujan, who is from the eighth density. I haven't channeled him in a while. Comes on with a very strong um, message. And then um, General Morgan, I began to channel in Arkansas in our Ukulo workshop in Arkansas a few years ago. He's a Naga. He is the one that has been coming through. Uh, I call him, well, he gave me the name General Morgan. I oh, General it's Morgan. Not his, okay. Yeah. Which is one reason why you see the name Trinity Morgan on my email. Oh, that's okay. kind of <laughs> that's kind of like in uh, honor of him. Okay. And he, he comes through a lot. Um, there is Pleiadian, um, at least someone from the family who comes through as well, but more in smaller groups. Uh, he won't be coming today. So uh, yesterday there was an angel who came through, and so I don't know. I tried to find out who's coming through today, and I didn't get a clear answer. I did get an answer that somebody that I haven't channeled before who I don't know uh, also wants to come through. Okay. So I can't really tell you. I'm sorry <laughs> very clearly. Oh, I do. Yeah. We'll find out when we find out. Yeah. Yes. So so how do you want to start? Do you want to start with meditation or it's, it's your call, however you want to begin? Uh, yeah, if if there's anybody who would like to, it doesn't have to be in light language, but it could be. Does anybody have a light language blessing before we begin they would like to offer? Sure. Anyone? Yeah. Is that Michelle Euro? <laughs> yes, thank you for using my last name. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, hi, Trinity. Hi, Good to see you. You Bye too, Trinity. Michelle. You too. Yeah, you might want to put Trinity on screen at some point. She is on screen. On my computer, she's not. I just see you. I have her locked on oh. screen. That's weird. Yeah. I have her locked on. I, I don't know what's going on, but that's what I see. Maybe yeah, I don't know why that is. Do you, does everyone still see me? I just clicked on her, so now I see her. Okay. Well, maybe you had clicked on me then, because yeah, I, I have I, I have it I have it clicked on her that the okay. YouTube is seeing her. Okay, gotcha. So no little no little snippy remarks there about me. <laughs> no, it wasn't snippy. I just want to make sure. That no, I know, but I was like, I really do. I have the white box on her, so everyone okay. should be seeing her. Okay. Very good. Okay. Cool. Go with your blessing then. Okay. I'm muting.
Namaste. Did you have an interpretation for that, Ruth? Or? No, I'm sorry. Thank you, Michelle. I was muted. I wanted to say thank you right away. Yes, beautiful. Thank you. Does anyone else have a blessing? Okay. Well, I think we can start then. All right. Karen, would you like to give a blessing, whether it's in English or yeah, language? I can give a blessing. That sure, would be awesome. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Uh Ni Li Upora mandala, kiashemia, ufania kapata, doria mesiraria sa, tu, ala kapiti, ni kafani, boriama, boria sa sancho, ka shile da kopiti nari garbadi, boria silar krimende, nari afetikata, shapatu, ma shila, resi, ari kuniamani, retiko, alia kopasati, ka kanamiaria, Ora di abridi kara sonti chomala yasi ambiriara. Pia ya patoko ia mande toshalia tu mande. Thank you. Thank you. Very beautiful. Okay. Oh, uh, Dave has one, I think. Hi, everyone. Hi. Is camera on Dave or no? Okay. Do you have it on? No. Okay. Sure. It doesn't matter. Mm. Bragana Shelia Yuaka Brahanza for Jund Beu Shainda Nas Nahu Elia Uaka Brahu Eshtanda Brana Sio Uaka Naiua Anasayuk Brahu Shane Dodua Uakansa Frua Ashtbe Nahu Tebeshton Unaha Ewak Deua Shindura Bewa Shindai Ana Saute Brahun Ana Ioka Bishunda Naha Tu Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Somebody waiting I'm going to begin. Thank you for your questions. And we come with blessings for you as well. You can call me Corey. And I am from the Yale Collective. And I am somebody that this host has not channeled before. But we send you many greetings. And we are always willing and happy when there is any of you who are willing to put themselves forth <clears throat> and to use their body and their voice as a channel for us, because we always have much to say by way of encouragement and counseling for you. So, greetings. You said your name is Corey and you're from Korea. Is that correct? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Well, now we're having feedback. One moment. Let me just make sure that everybody is muted. There is great silence. Can you can you hear me or not? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. I would just for for us, just because um there was just a moment of uh feedback so we we all kind of stopped but does, if anyone has any questions go ahead and pl put it in the uh chat and uh, uh funa's a ooh, f i'm just going to call you funa funa has a question go ahead funa can you can you unmute or not yeah hello uh, okay, i was just wondering uh, like about communicating with you uh how would that be um, easier for me to do you know what i'm saying 
what practices do you have that brings your emotional, mental, and spiritual state to a higher point? Mm. Well, uh, nature, I guess. Very well. It will be easier for me to communicate with you when you are in nature because it is vibration matches vibration. And now that my host has a lot of spiritual help surrounding her, it is easier for me to come into her or her to meet my vibration. It is vibration and intention. If you would like to communicate with us, we are always ready. But it is easier for you to hear and to feel and to perceive and to speak. when we can come in more fully and fully and fully the higher and higher you go, if that makes sense. All right, thank you. So, thank you very much. Yes, but ask for Ask for me. Go out in nature and ask for me, and you will what? perceive me as much as it is possible to perceive at your vibration. How did you introduce yourself again? What was your name? Corey. Oh, yeah, thank you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michelle has a question. She's painting, apparently, so she can't ask. But she uh, <laughs> she said... She wants to know from what uh, dimension are you and what gender? Maybe you can give a little bit more of a description of you, yourself, your your uh, experience of... How about being. Michelle describes herself to me? She's mentioned that she was painting and she could not. So that's why I'm asking for her. I understand. And I am being a little bit comical about it. Mm. Okay. does not really matter which dimension I am from. I can tell you that I am male. And we are from, I am from the collective. So we are, well, it does not matter which dimension I am from. I would like you all to feel me and not think about me. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, that makes sense. Ask Michelle, ask Michelle to feel into me and then tell me later which dimension she perceives me to be from. Okay, Michelle, please feel into Corey and let her know, or let him know later which dimension you believe him to be from. Because he is also asking, she's also asking about planet and star systems. But if that's not something you're going to share, then... Why don't, why don't you say maybe more? What is your primary purpose for coming to us today? Which we're we're very happy to have you. And what is it that you are here really to teach us at this moment in, in time? We all come to help you on your journey to your destiny, which is your fourth density, fifth dimensional selves and higher, step by step. So whatever you need to hear from us, counsel we can give you. I believe that throughout the weeks and months and years that we have been coming to speak with you from all the reading and all the talking that you do among yourselves, the information is quite ample about your chakras to clean them and how to strengthen yourself through them, about raising your vibration, about what a heart of love is all about and acceptance. These are not new concepts. I would only be teaching you much of the same. However, if I could help anyone in by way of counseling, with something they might be going through on this journey, then I am happy to do that. And we all are. And this is why we come, to help you help yourselves and to help you unite as a community. 
mm-hmm. to become a network, to become a net, not only to meet and disperse, but to be a net. This was said the other day in a different channeling. To become a net that you hold each other up and that you can, from this support system, you can unfold all of your gifts. Not to say you are not already unfolding your gifts, but there is a need for a feeling of safety in order to unfold them even more and to go more public with what you might want to go public with. Not everybody needs to, but some of you want to, but you fear it. And so we are here to help you with all of that. Okay. If anyone has a question, please type it in the chat and we can have you ask Corey. I have a question for you, um, as there's, I don't see any questions at the moment, about light languages, because when we speak light languages, we trust that the information coming out of us is relevant to our need or something that we need to learn or a in, or something we need to integrate or a vibrational uh, attunement that we need to receive. But do you in your species also use light language in the same way? Is that is that a is that a system that you employ? Well when you use light languages you are communicating the languages of different beings. Of course. So if somebody is communicating my language, it is considered a light language, but we do not necessarily need light language in that sense. You're channeling my language. Somebody is channeling my language or the language of a Lyran or the Andromedan or someone from Orion. Several different languages are available. And it is connecting to the beings themselves and their energy when you are communicating in their languages. It so is to learn. Oh, go, go ahead. Please continue. Yes. When these beings are communicating in this way through the light language, yes, they would normally feel quite uplifting. And for those who can interpret the message, it's not always necessary to interpret the message because the messages are usually more or less the things that I have just shared about that we have been sharing with you for many years. They're just said in different ways. They're meant to inspire and encourage and to help you believe that there is more beyond your physical body and that your spirit goes way beyond your physical body and that your soul is connected to many galaxies of lifetimes and will be in the future. It is a preparation to live in the next life. Do you think there'll be a moment where the understanding of the language becomes embedded in the mind of the person speaking the language? Because for now, the majority of people, I would say, don't have any idea what they're saying, but they're only letting a flow of energy come out of them in the word the the in in the formation of sound and syllable that is inspired from something maybe deep within but it's not like i'm speaking to you right now where i know exactly what i'm saying Mm -hmm. i forgot the beginning of your question my dear (laughs) the question was would would someone because you 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 stipulate or you stated that the language is a preparation for communication with other beings. And my, my question is, if that's true, then uh, is there going to be a moment where you understand what you're saying word for word or within yes, blocks? Of course. Of yes, yes, of course. And will that it is, yes, there, there are many, who, there are many who can, and there are those who speak like blank languages all over the world. They are not mm-hmm. here in, community, but they do, and they understand. And it is like the hostess was speaking in the beginning about speaking of tongues and interpretation of tongues. It's not always meant for the person speaking the language to interpret it. Why? Because you are a community, and you are meant to be a community, and you are meant to need each other. So it is not always 
I will not use the word appropriate. It is not always, hmm. In any case, it is good when one speaks and another interprets. Okay. This was probably what is meant to be so that you can need each other and learn from each other. Does that make sense? Sure. Yes, thank you. And it uh, is important to it is important to use the intuition, of course, and to feel. I want you to feel me, not only hear me, but to feel me, to feel my energy, because it is of great intention. It is of good intention to move you, to touch you, to raise you in your energy and in your love. And this gives you encouragement and energy to have the power to knock over obstacles instead of feeling overwhelmed by them. You see an obstacle and therefore the next thing is you see a solution instead of feeling overwhelmed and run over by your obstacles. So we are here, I am here to give you that energy and that it is your own power, but to ignite your own power more and more so that you can move forward despite any obstacles that may come your way, which of course are lessons. And sometimes they are just thrown in your way to keep you from moving forward. But it is still nonetheless a lesson to kick them aside when you need to. Okay, thank you for that. Or I say, feel me beyond hear me. We are of course coming from a higher dimension to you. That is natural. It doesn't matter whether it's ninth, eighth, seventh, sixth, fifth, fourth. The message and the feeling of the message is what matters. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, Ava has a question. Ava. Hi. Hi. Um, when we live in this third dimension, um, we have a lot of helpers who feels like army of helpers, our higher selves, angels, guides, and in my case, several more beings. Is that, I know, I know, understand that we have a veil and we don't see who we are and we don't understand much here. But um, when we are in higher dimensions, let's say fifth dimension, do we still have these helpers? Do we still hire, have higher selves and other beings from higher dimensions helping us and guiding us? There will always be a process of ascension, no matter which dimension you might find yourself in. And there will always be those who are from those higher dimensions who come and help us in other dimensions to move forward. It will not necessarily be the kind of help that you need now in your earthly dimension because there is a there is a blanket, there is often a blanket of deep dark clouds that make it difficult to break through and to show and communicate as much as as you said your guides and your higher self would like to. You can integrate your higher self into your being more and more through meditation and through acts of service. And when you do this, it becomes, you clear the air, so to speak, around you. The clouds start to move away and it becomes easier for you to hear and to perceive who is there and who is helping you. It is, a, it is something to be vigilant with. One needs to be vigilant with this kind of preparation and this kind of clearing in order to connect more deeply. So in the higher dimension, there is always, God is infinite and our, all of our beings are meant to constantly evolve and develop towards that infinite being. Therefore, yes, there will always be a need for help but not in the same way it is more guidance or communication there will be 
when you get into other dimensions and it will be easier to open up those channels. Yes, does that answer your question? Um, yes, thank you. I have a, another question. Um, it seems to me that life in this three dimension is honestly challenging but um, like in my case we keep coming I keep coming back and keep coming back and other beings do the same um, I know that we come here because we have mis missions but is it also that there is some how do we perceive it do we perceive it as <laughs> fun from because that's what i also heard that it seems like fun from different perspective from high dimensional perspective although it's not so fun when we are here but um is there anything also personal here i hope you understand the meaning of my question not exactly okay besides the mission like um higher um point of view trying to help trying to move humanity to ascension do we have um like something personal here because we are choosing to come I am not completely understanding your question. However, I will say this, that those who choose to be incarnated in a time when the earth is its most tumultuous, before they come, they come with a feeling of great joy and joy to serve. At the same time, maybe this is what you mean by fun, but at the same time, they know that there will be challenges, but when the infant is born, it forgets all of these. Otherwise, it may not want to grow up, so to speak. I'm being a little bit comical now in this moment, but yes, it is good to forget and to grow up and to be able to contribute what one, why one came to contribute. Yes, and they will meet the other beings and their soul group and those along the way who help them towards the reason that they came to the earth, even though they were born unawares. Although there are many children being born that are aware much, much sooner than let's say in your generation or the generation before that. They are born almost aware and they become aware quite early. And they are already, you see young children doing amazing things in this world, discovering cures in their teens, serving the homeless below the age of 10 years old, rescuing animals, doing counseling even. There are so many young children doing amazing things on your planet right now, and they need to be encouraged to continue. It is your children who will save you, it has been said. Nonetheless, your question, yes, people do come with willingness and joy and they forget in the beginning and then life is hard for them because somewhere in their spirit it is a knowing that this was not where they came from and what they really wanted to face. And yet there is also the question of the ancestral lineage so your mother and your father come from eight generations and more and more beyond, but eight generations that affect their particular life now and the life of their children. So this also has an effect on the individual. So if the ancestors battled with addictions or spousal abuse or compulsive behavior, or there was murder in the last eight generations. These energies leak down into the lives of those living it now. 
and there may be situations where they are faced with similar challenges and they can overcome it. And when they overcome it, they begin to dissolve the ancestral burden. So there is the burden of what the entity came for, and then there is the burden of the ancestral. But there is also great joy and great connection with God when you all seek it to help you on that journey. Has that answered your question? Well, uh, my question, um, it's interesting because on one point, um, I understand my own questions on the other, I am not sure myself, but I really loved your answer and um, I am blessed with amazing child, like you mentioned. So it's, thank you so much. Very well, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, we're gonna go, go back to Funa. Funa, go ahead for your question and we'll go to Lucia. Go ahead, Funa. Oh, I'm sorry. I uh, forgot my question because you gave so many answers already. But uh, okay, I, uh, well, you can we can go to Lucia then and come back to you in a little bit when you have a question. Yeah, my, uh, my question was I I, I remember that it was um, uh, like um, you could uh, uh, tell us a little bit more about about you about how you perceive life, so to speak. Uh, if you get my point. I am here to help you perceive life. <laughs> All right, thank you. I, I do not understand what you mean by how I perceive life. In my world, in my life? Yeah, exactly. And how will that help you in your life right now? Uh, I guess spark my imagination or something. And how do you imagine your extraterrestrial friends to be living? Oh, uh, I see it as a very rich world uh, and there's a lot of communication going on and I think it's very loving and uh, all of the good stuff. Mm. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. We do not love with the same erraticism, with the same intensity our actions are more based on purpose you can liken it to and this is not meant as an insult to this kingdom but you can liken it to the ant kingdom we are very very connected yes we know what we need to do and it is communicated to us and we work diligently at it and we help to build, and we help to facilitate education and to facilitate our missions to come here and to communicate with so many of you around the world, which we do. So our lives are not as emotionally intense. So when you say all the good stuff, I. You might be perceiving that from a human point of view, but I would say that we live a good life, that we live to support and to build and to educate and to heal and to love in our way, which may be different from your way. And we are, some of our Civilizations are not open to intergalactic trade and communication, and some of them are. We are interested in your world because it is moving forward, and we want to help you move forward with it. And we want to help you to help others to move forward with it. The purpose of your being here and to, to grow and to understand more is to become an example in your own family, in your own life, in the community around yourselves. Some of you want to be ambassadors, and this requires 
involvement and taking responsibility for others around you and helping where you can. So we're here to facilitate that. If that has answered your question to some yes. satisfaction. Yes, thank you very much. Very well. Lucia. Yes, hello, this is Lucia. Thank you for coming. I'm going to go back to the subject of light languages. And I was wondering if you could expand on the effects, um, or more so the healing properties of light language, the, such as physical and or emotional, for the person who is speaking the light language and for those who are hearing it. I will give you the image of taking a shower. How do you feel when you are under the shower? Oh, uh, how do I feel under the shower? Well, very nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Light language is a shower. You can think of it that way. It is falling down upon you, coming through you, and just cleansing and lifting up the heart and giving wisdom to your soul and your spirit, even if you do not understand the exact words. You do not understand the exact words of the water, but the water brings refreshment and cleansing. It lifts up the spirit. It even gets people to sing in the shower and to speak languages and to do things they normally wouldn't do in front of a camera, perhaps. But it is that kind of a breathing out and freeing feeling which showers down upon you. This is one of the purposes of light languages. It is not always necessary to be shared with others. It can be just your own shower. It can be shared with others as well. It can uplift others as well. There are many types of languages spoken which bring codes to help facilitate the strengthening of the human blueprint, so to speak, where there may be holes in it, or there may be weaknesses, or there may be exhaustion, or there may be breakages in the genomes or the DNA codes. This is another type of language that is given to you through others, through certain others. At the same time, it's not necessary to understand the words. When you listen to Italian music and you not understand the words, you can feel music, or in the language you may not understand, and yet you can feel completely inspired and moved by this song, by this music. It is the same with classical. There are no words in that sense but the classical music and the tones and the harmonies can inspire great imagination for great things. It is an incredible venue of codes coming through your music on your world, but not only your music, all forms of art are codes. You can look around you and see codes everywhere and see light language everywhere if you choose to. It is all a matter of perspective. And when you raise your own vibration, you see them even more. You suddenly see things you didn't see before. It's like watching a movie five times, and each time you say to yourself, I don't remember that. I don't remember that from the last time. And so it is the higher you raise your being, you will look at the same thing and see something new. You will see that there are codes and lights and languages all around you. Does that answer your question? Yes, partly. I, I have a following question about this. Um, I've heard that some, some people can actually heal wounds with light language. Let's say I were to cut my finger and just by speaking to it, I could heal my finger. 
Yes, it doesn't always have to be like language. It is a matter of understanding that you, all of you, have the power to move matter with your mind. There are different movements on your planet who practice this. They will not call it light language, though. It doesn't really matter. And that is fine. That is fine. You can imagine, I mentioned a shower. Imagine this energy coming down and filling the cells of your body. How nice that is. How nice is that image? Like a waterfall. And also releasing and letting you know that you can have the power to do exactly that. Even if you are not speaking the right language, you can look at a wound and heal it. If you practice, if you believe, did not your Jesus say with a grain of a mustard seed, you can move mountains you only believed. And there is the key word, be, leave. And it is very difficult because most of you grow up in an environment where belief is given to you in a very structured and dense manner. And these experiences of seeing wounds heal is not something that most of you have grown up with. But those who are advanced in their spiritual awakenings, like many Buddhas, so to speak, many yogis who can do the same. They will not tell you it's a light language. You can call it light language if you wish. It doesn't matter. Just believe that it's not only some who can do it. You can do it as well if you believe and, and believe. But there's always a part of humans who look and say, I believe, and nothing happens. And then they throw it out the window and say, oh, well, it didn't work. And so they give up. So it is a matter of perseverance and belief. And if you believe that you can do this with light language, then invite that light language in and use it. Thank you. Um, one other question. Now, when we first start speaking light languages, what is it that determines the, the species of language? Is it, be, is it our DNA? It can be your DNA, yes. It can also be your energy is high enough to attract in language that might be around you at the time. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. No, it was out of interest because um, this something that is coming for me at the moment, it's trickling in. Um, it's very natural. And I, I was just wondering the type of it, it, why is it more one type than another? That is all. That's fine. Okay, I understand. I know, I, I know, I know. It is only that intellectualizing stops the process. Mm. This is what yes. I was trying to tell you, my dear. I do understand. Yes. And you have a very curious mind and an intellectual mind. And it is possible to let go of the intellectualism, then that trickling would become more like a waterfall. And once it became a waterfall, you would have all the answers to your questions. You are seeking answers before the waterfall. But once you allow the waterfall, the answers will come. Well, thank you for that. Thank you very much for, for answering my questions today. Mm -hmm. Very well. I believe that I am going now. Okay. I believe there is someone else who would like to. There is one in. more question. There is one more question, but if you want to go, we can maybe wait. If, if is another being coming, or are you? Are are is? I don't know. I believe that I believe there is one more coming. But if there is one more question, 
Yes. Okay, Michelle has a question. Go ahead, Michelle. Thanks. Um, Hello, Michelle. I, <laughs> so I feel like, um, well, first I felt embarrassed when I did light language because it was weird. And also beings would push through me. So I would be like maybe um, in a public place and then suddenly languages would just start coming out of my mouth, which is mm. really embarrassing. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Or somebody would ask me something in English I want to answer in another language. So over time, mm. I just came to trust whatever happens, happens. And mostly I use it to raise my own vibration, but I use it in um, healing sessions. And, um, <clears throat> and somebody asked me, what is it exactly? And this was the best answer I had. Um, so I'd like to know if it's accurate because when I do healing, of course, I only want the highest and best information to be allowed to come through me. Um, <clears throat> so I said, you know, like we have ancestors and so if you can go beyond, we have ancestors on earth who maybe, so maybe I had a lifetime or if you believe in reincarnation or whatever, like I've had a lifetime as a Syrian, as Egyptian, as a this, as a that. And then, so sometimes maybe I'll be speaking those languages, but maybe also I had a lifetime as a Pleiadian, Arcturian, Lumerian, Atlantan, or maybe you did and they're stepping forward to give you messages because that's what it feels like when I'm doing healing on a person that <clears throat> the sound that is birthed is to them for them specifically to heal whatever imbalances they have. So trying to explain to someone why I just made a bunch of gibberish at them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would like to be as precise as possible. And so I feel like I said, you know, I believe in reincarnation and I believe we've had lifetimes as these people. And sometimes you have ancestors and or people who were in your soul group and they have come forward and they have something to say to you. And the interesting part, it never it, it might be surprising to them, but it really helps them feel calm and it really helps them. And a lot of times they say that feels like home. So am I accurate in my assessment of what languages are? Like, I mean, it could be anything from any planet, this planet, an angel, whatever. Yes, uh, yes. However, it doesn't always need to be the fact that you have lived so many of these lives and this is why you are speaking that language uh -huh. or their ancestors or their past lives experiences or connections are coming to them. Although it can also be that. It can also be that as I explained to uh, Lucia, that there are, when there is a willingness, when there is a light bulb, so to speak, because many beings, they are looking at your energy. They mm -hmm. may not be able to see that you are shopping, but they will see the light and they will come to this light and try to facilitate communicating with you as this light mm -hmm. to communicate and to bring you forward. Mm -hmm. It is like in the darkest realms of the spiritual world, when somebody has a good thought, there is a light which goes off mm -hmm. and then the being the higher realms come immediately, instantly, to try and facilitate that light to grow, mm -hmm. to communicate where it's possible. So when there is light shining in the darkness, it will attract beings who want to help you, help okay. you heal. It may not always be past lives. You can explain it that your desire to heal attracts angels, attracts mm -hmm spiritual beings, attracts friendly galactic beings who wish to heal through you because you are willing to and you are serving and you are a channel in that moment. Yes. And that these beings are coming through you for you, Michelle, but also for the person you are 
giving to. So I believe at the end of a healing session, you are both feeling wonderful, are you not? Not yes. only the person you've healed, but also yourself. Yes. So this is the most simplest of explanations that you can give. If the idea of reincarnation and having lived many, many different lifetimes, yes, those can trickle down, but it doesn't always have to trickle down through language and through it healing. It just be that whoever shows up for the highest good at that time. Exactly. It can be your ancestors. It can be someone who you have lived with or communicated with in the past. But I'm saying it does not have to be. Right, right, right. But it's just one of the possibilities. So yes. I, I've also um, noticed that when I'm doing sessions recently, I'm starting to get packets, I guess you would call the information, like feeling scapes, and I'm understanding what they're trying to say to the client. Like, yes, very that, well. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. I want to know, actually, I don't know if you can delve into. So I did a session yesterday and I just like went with it. I'm like, oh, well, I have this packet of information in my head. I'm just going to share it. So what I'm getting is and then I share that information. Um, if you can tap into that stream. Um, can you? Number one? No. OK, no. All right. However, I will tell you that you are being a conscious channeler in that moment and uh -huh. I receive information for them. And right. this is wonderful. And right. that is what you're doing. Yeah. I cannot at this moment, uh, it is not a 100% uh, energy channeling right here mm -hmm. that I can tap in. Okay. And, but believe, continue, believe in that. Believe right. that a wonderful development and trust it yeah. and allow it to open it up open up keep opening up those packages and share what is coming into your mind because even though you may say something and the client cannot relate to it at that moment they will later on understand the connection so okay. do not doubt what you need to say and oh, believe I that to you from the beings the angels the guides who are working through you right I think a lot of people think, um, like, I have no connection of starting languages to a church situation. <laughs> so, so people are like, what is that? And I'm like, light language? Uh, <laughs> God works in many ways. <laughs> yes. So uh, your God, our God, all God, the universal God, their creator, however you want to call this energy, this being works in many, many ways to reach his, her children. So mm -hmm. whether it's through the Christian concept of speaking in tongues and interpreting them, if that is edifying and uplifting and educational, it is good. It is good. And here is the word good. Let that sink in. It is good. Light languages can be good. And they can I facilitate goodness. When they facilitate goodness and bring the being to good actions, which in turn the spirit which bring which raises the spirit up raising of your spirits and your vibration is not only a matter of meditation and feeling the goodness it is then a matter of action your body exists to act and when your body is acting it is then feeding back to your spirit good elements to your spirit so when speaking in tongues in a church or receiving light languages and being inspired from them and receiving perhaps an idea from them later on about an art project or a writing project or a musical project, you don't know when you receive a light language uh -huh. that releases ideas.
within mm-hmm. your mind to your heart later on. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a mystery, but it's a wonderful mystery. Mm-hmm. You don't need no. Let go of the mind. Let go of no, intellectual I don't, mind. I don't feel like I need to know. I'm not, I am not. Okay. I am not speaking now to you. Okay. This is my party message because now I am going. Okay. Thank you. Into I think it is important to have as much knowledge as you can, especially if you want to now and later on be able to converse with several levels of your society, be it highly intellectual to the less intellectual. So I am not saying it is not important to be an intellectual person of knowledge. However, it is important to know when to put that aside and to allow the spirit to flow and allow things to happen without having to figure out exactly what, where, who, and how it is happening in order to allow it. Allow it, feel it, discern it, and then decide you continue with it or you don't. It is always your decision. And with that, I have been here a while now. I hope that my words and my time with you have been energetically and intellectually. I will now be a comic in this moment, edifying for all of you. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Corey. Namaste. It has been an interesting pleasure. For us as well. Okay. Okay. I cannot, I cannot get a clear. Um, I I know that I can't really tell. It's either General Morgan or an angel, but I cannot tell exactly. Okay. <laughs> so I'll a, take a break. That, did you that's drink okay. some water or drink some water? Yeah. Um, yes. in, the, in the meantime, while you're kind of taking a little break, uh, Wendy had like some comments because she's like the light language woman. So maybe Wendy, why don't you go ahead and just for maybe two minutes giving uh, Ruth just a little break and we'll uh, pick it back up with her. Hey guys, how you doing? Can you hear me okay, Karen? Yeah, you're fine. Thanks. Great. Hi everyone. I just wanted to, you know me, I love light languages. <laughs> it's my highest excitement. And I just wanted to really just reiterate that everything, um, was it Corey that was speaking right at that time? Yeah. Okay. Um, about every, it's interesting, all of the synchronicities, because everything that Corey said was actually everything that my guides have been telling me since I started speaking them, um, as far as how they work, why they work, um, how they work in different ways. Many of us are also writing them. So that was one thing that we didn't really get to touch on too much, but um, which is something I'd love to expand on because more and more of us are actually writing these light codes. But it was interesting, the similarities that so uh, the that my guides, the emissaries of the Light Collective also said to me when I first started speaking them was um, that they, it's not always one specific language, but sometimes it is. Sometimes it's a culmination of many. Sometimes it's a collective. But they used the they used music and symphony, and um, as a metaphor, as a, you, to compare how it makes you feel. And so I was enjoying how Corey kept going back to, but how does it make you feel? As far as not necessarily needing to know who, what, where, when, and how, um, but just allowing them to flow. And that whole trust factor has been huge with me over the last several years in utilizing the languages. Um, But I loved that there was so many similarities. It was very confirming and validating for me to hear 
using those exact same words. How does a, a piece of music that has no words move you potentially to tears or, you know, um, so, and think about how boring, say, for example, a movie would be if there wasn't music attached to it, you know, because the music is, helps kind of create the scene, right? You know, you get the scary scene, it's boom, 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 you know, your heart gets going. And so we have a physical reaction to sound and um, in of itself, it can be healing. Um, you know, somebody can listen to hip hop and find it extremely healing, whereas somebody else would listen to classical music and find it extremely healing. That doesn't make one more healing or more effective than the other. It's that each of us has a different frequency. So it was very interesting. So I just wanted to, to share a little bit of that because it was very validating and confirming for me. And um, thank you all for your, for your questions. It was wonderful. Thank you, Trinity. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Wendy. Thank love you, you so baby. <laughs> love you. Oh my God. It's so <sighs> good to see you. I know I, we haven't, she and I, Ruth and I haven't done a, 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 hang, a webinar together in a long time. So I'm happy to be here with oh, you. <laughs> me too. Me too. And thank you because, you know, uh, I'm not in trends and I, I, I'm speaking and I'm thinking, oh God, I hope this is not me. <laughs> and well, so I had to laugh too, you guys, because I got to meet, I got to meet her and it was the night. That's why I was laughing too, because I was there the night that Captain <laughs> oh, <General Morgan. laughs> came yeah. through. Remember we were sitting at the table and it was like, I don't know, two in the morning or something. And I remember, I remember. And he comes through, general comes through and it was just the funniest thing. And we were, we were, we were, um, speaking Naga and, oh, it was just such a great, um, environment. Yes. But, uh, so yeah, I wanted to, to let everybody know that too, you guys, <laughs> if you have the opportunity to go to some of these events where we've got these, um, you know, the, anytime we've got these, uh, events going on around the country, if you guys can get there, please do, because I'll tell you what, meeting everybody, and and that was the day it's actually, and it was there in Arkansas day. that the name, like you said earlier, that the name Trinity Morgan was born because. <laughs> also, yes, also, I didn't go into that, but yeah, the Trinity part came with Wendy because we were going to start a group, and I said I'm going to call myself Trinity. And you said, yes, yes. I said, oh, my God, yes, you should. And then how did you? And you said, well, wait, what do I need? A, I need a last name or something. How, I don't even remember how Morgan came up. Yeah, that was from the general. Because that night when, when we were channeling around the table with Sarah, it was so funny because Sarah and I were talking snake language back and forth. And if anybody had been watching it, it, it looked like we were going to kill each other. But we weren't because that's how they communicate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Right, 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 right. <laughs> oh, so funny. Yeah, so I'm but, well here. I'm gonna I'll let you get back into your state because I'm already I'm already can feel the language is bubbling, so I'm just gonna let you be. <laughs> oh no, that's great. And can you give a blessing before I begin again, honey? Oh, I would love to. Oh gosh, yes, I would love to. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay, doll. Namaste. Namaste. I'm so that was powerful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. However, even though the General Morgan would come, uh, Arusha would like to come. Okay. And I'm going to bring her through. You know, and I'm going to bring her through. Sure. Thank you. Hello, this is Arusha. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi, Arusha. Welcome and thank you for coming. 
Okay, well, let's turn up the let's turn up the vibes here and let's get some music going and get our bodies going and get some joy into this room because that's what I'm all about is bringing joy. So, <laughs> Uh, we, we, how is everybody? We turn on the music because if if I turn it on, it'll come out wrong. So it'll have to be on your side, or else it won't work. But we'll 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 follow your dancing body as a as a uh, indication. Uh, 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 yes, I meant that. Yes, yeah, so it was it was meant to symbolic. Like everybody, just turn up the music in your head and and dance and move and feel the joy because all of this information that you are receiving is wonderful it's also a little bit heavy at times and it's like oh boy there is so much to learn and oh boy there is so much to reach and oh boy the world is burning and oh boy and yes that is all true however if you have the spirit of joy and upliftment it is easier to uplift others easier to overcome obstacles together it's not true very true a lot of healing, a lot of healing takes place in laughter as you know and in joy yes and there is a reason to be joyful for every thing no matter what it is no matter what it is, there is joy in everything. I will not speak like this the whole <laughs> conversation. Now, I just want to emphasize that if a human being chose to, you could be joyful every moment of your life, no matter what was befalling you. And I know this sounds like a impossibility to some karen i think you know from your education and your experiences with india and your teachers that this is possible is that not true i believe you are correct <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yes and that is one of their their mm, callings in life or missions in, in life is to observe and see everything different eyes than that of the personal ego and oh this is happening to me and oh why is this happening to me and they are also transmuters consider a train will through them and smack and it will come out the other end as flowers yes <laughs> as <laughs> i hope you like that imagery but uh, yes yeah and so it is so it is with us things come at us and depending on how we understand and how we can observe and see things from a larger perspective and learn and transform what is meant to transform within us, when it comes out the other side, it is fragrant and beautiful and joyful. And this is my message for you today. My dear, dear, brothers and sisters, because we are ultimately galactic families. Yes, I will say that, yes. So, feeling the joy, <laughs> feeling the joy right now. <laughs> Share your joys. Share your joys with one another. Thank you. Uh, are you able to take some questions? I am, but I would also hear some joy. I am serious. Well, because everyone joy unmute your mic and sound their joy, please. Woohoo! <laughs> well, you, I didn't mean in that way necessarily. <laughs> okay. Share, share beautiful things that have happened to you uh, in in this week, in this month, and what's happening. Even the hardships, let them be seen from the perspective that they come out as joy. Help each other. We see that without educating each other from above to below but simply sharing because this is also a form of upliftment i know that many times joy is seen as a byproduct it is something you earn after a hardship it is something you earn after a hard day's work 
No, I am saying it is something you can be in all the time. And it is not trivial in any way at all. Can you all understand what I am saying? Perfect. Well, I, if there's anyone who would like to unmute and share some experiences they have from the aspect of the joy, then uh, please do. Anybody? I do. Consider okay, yes. Yes. <laughs> That's very simple, but I loved it so much. Yes. I I finally started really committing to like going through my um, paperwork and responsibilities and like tidying up and like just finally committing and doing it. And I thought to myself, I really need a desk with drawers because I have all these boxes of papers and I have all these art supplies, et cetera. And I don't have, I need a desk with drawers. And <clears throat> I left the house um, in a half an hour later and I was walking down the street and on the street was beautiful, <laughs> uh, solid, and there you go. solid, solid you desk and three men passing by at the same time who I got to say, hey, would you guys mind helping me carry this desk? And they were like, sure. And so that yes. was a very simple, beautiful joy. And I was like, oh, we absolutely. got Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yes, absolutely. And thank you for sharing that. It is like manifestation immediate and immediate joy. Yes, that's wonderful, wonderful, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. I want to not take too much time because I know that your webinars, because I listen to them, I do not speak, uh, is a limited time. But thank you for sharing that. It is an example of intent. You made a commitment to move your body to do something and you started to feel the joy of it. And then you manifested a literal joy and the universe conspired all together three men yours michelle beautiful thank you very much thank you okay Karen, I, do I, have, take I do have some questions for you if if you would take yes. one May, this yes, this please. will fall into your joyful message so i think it's right very well right. okay <laughs> very well, renee well. renee wants to know she says what are the most mm -hmm most important specific actions or behaviors we should be doing to prepare for ascension? Mm. Well, find joy in all that you are experiencing, no matter what it is. Find the benefit in what you consider hardships or obstacles, that's one thing. That will raise your vibration significantly and Vibration needs to match vibration. So therefore, the higher you raise your vibration, the easier it will be for you to communicate and to feel and to see uh, those in the dimension that is trying to help raise you into or the next place you might be going. That's one thing. Prayer is another. And I don't mean the, I know there are words on your planet that create, uh, you know, a feeling of, oh, that reminds me of having to do something. But you can call it prayer or meditation. However, the concept of prayer usually implies others being other centered, praying for others, caring about others. And sometimes only prayer can help you care for someone else when you might. Feel, I hate that person. I hate them and I will never forgive them. Oh, does that take away joy from our lives? But it is understandable because that action that they did is mounted on other experiences before it. And that is why it is so intense. They may even be experiences you have forgotten, but they are mounted. And so, therefore, it is very intense and difficult to feel the joy. Therefore, Prayer can help forgiving someone or loving them 
loving them back into who they are. When you love somebody back into who they are, you are growing into who you are as well. It is always a mutual thing. Like when Michelle is speaking her like language and getting information consciously and giving it and healing. And then it is with all of you who do healing. I know there are great healers in this room and great speakers of language. And when you are giving and taking with another being, be it spiritual or human in that action, then there is joy for all involved. So that is another way to be other centered in whichever way, whether it is prayer, if you cannot get out, it can be prayer. It can be writing letters to people who are lonely. It can be writing, bringing little packets to the elderly in your local nursery home, even if you do it anonymously. It can be actions of service in any way, shape, or form that raise your spirit and your vibration. And this is all part of ascending because those who are of a higher ascension cannot abide where there is selfishness and greed and deceit and purposeful action against another. These things do not exist in the light aspect of the higher dimensions. Therefore, when you are doing acts of goodness and praying and raising your vibration and singing and dancing and seeing and feeling the joy in all you do, then this is how you prepare for ascension. In purpose, important is involving yourself in the community around you and serving in any way, shape, or form. And seeing the joy in all things, no matter what it is. I hope that has helped you with your question to some degree. I think so. I don't know. I can't answer for her, but I think so. <laughs> Very well. It was a statement. It was a good statement. How are, are you? Are you willing? Do, are you? Are you tiring? And do you want to stick around? Oh, oh, bit? I'm. I'm so. I'm so happy. I can keep going. Okay. Well, uh, Stephanie has a question. Go ahead, Stephanie. Hello. She did have a question. She was in her car, so. <laughs> yes, I am. It took me a minute to get to uh, my phone. Greetings Hello, Stephanie. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Lovely to meet mm -hmm. you. Thank you. I wanted to ask a question about crystals and how um, if there are um, uh, uh, practices, couldn't think of the word, practices in your culture that you uh, make use of crystals in? And if so, what, would, what are those things and what kind of crystals uh, do you use, if any? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. And that would require a eight-hour class to explain. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I am so being I a little bit... I, I am joking with you a little bit, my dear. Uh, however, yes, uh, crystals are essential. They are breathing, living beings. So we communicate with them very naturally in a way that is perhaps different from how you communicate with them. What I want to say is, of course, you communicate with them when you speak to them in your mind and when you have intentions for them and they do their best to fill your intentions for them. However, yes, the density prohibits some perhaps from actually hearing the voice of the crystals or seeing the energy go out from the crystals to its intended place. So we can hold a crystal and say, please go to such and such a location and bring such and such a message or energy, and we can experience it doing that. Wow, that's wonderful. And Yes, and there are crystals of all different sorts. However, we don't, we encourage you to use crystals for healing on your planet. 
uh, we don't always need them for healing in that sense on our planet. There's just a lot of communication and and we can educate through them as well. We can use them as sources of education in classrooms and just sources of joy and communication into other galaxies. It's just it depending on the purpose for which that particular crystal, we can craft crystals to have certain intentions as well. We can put intentions into crystals with their allowance, of course, and then we can use them for different things, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Can you give me, a, give me an example of what you would say to a crystal if you were programming an intention into it? Just an example. Well, tell me what you would say. What kind of intention have you used into your crystals? Because um, I believe it would be the same as what we would say. Yeah, some t for the most part, I make it general because sometimes I lose them or I give them away. So I just uh, intend that that whoever has possession of this crystal, that it serve their greatest and highest good. What do you mean? I understand what you mean. What I mean is, what do you mean? <laughs> I am being joking with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're funny. Well, I, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're very welcome. So when you, do you buy crystals? Do you hunt for them? Do you, are you, are you often given crystals? How does that happen? Um, I didn't hear what you said the first time. Am I, am I what them? Do you buy them? Do you hunt for them? Are you given them oh. often? At no, I, I go to look for them to, to buy them and um, I have I have quite a few probably um, could really have a lot more but I kind of hoard them all into mostly one or two or three rooms <laughs> because I want mm -hmm. them to be around <laughs> mm -hmm. and I like being able yes. to see them and pick them up and yes. so and sometimes I give them away as gifts Yes, everything on everything in nature is meant to serve. In other words, be a part of something larger than itself. So you can choose some of your crystals and first you can ask it if it is already programmed for a specific purpose, if it has already been used and programmed for healing, for, for magical, spells for whatever somebody programming someone may have put into it or the nature of its character. What kind of character, what kind of programming does it have itself? Because not all crystals will be used for the same purposes and for the different energy centers of your bodies as well. So do you have a way of finding out if your crystals, uh, they already programmed? Can you use a form of dowsing to get this information? Or do you know someone who can help you get this information? Um, I have a dowsing um, pendulum, but I haven't used them for my crystals. I mean, I've, I, I never thought to ask if they were already programmed for a certain thing. I sage them, I wash them, I sage them, and then I know that, you know, certain properties are a certain are associated with with certain stones. And so sometimes I'll intention them if I'm doing uh, a distance healing or if I'm doing Reiki or um, I'm focusing on chakras, then I'll use certain stones. But uh, the I mean, so to me, you know, being kind of a newbie um, in, in so many ways still, uh, I'm early down this path. I mean, I'm only like four years in and there's still so much. There's a lot I've learned, but there's still so much I am learning. And that's kind of the scope of it for right now. So anything that you um, can, can share, uh, I will take in and receive. Mm, thank you. And thank you for sharing that. So take your pendle 
And when you feel comfortable using it uh, with them, or again, if you haven't used it for a while, hold them over your crystals and they will speak to you. And you ask, are you male? Are you female? Uh, do you need to be cleansed? Can I put you in a place of cleansing? Are you here for healing? Are you here for communication? Are you here simply to purify? Uh, for what intention are you here for? How can I use you? Now, of course, the these crystals and the stones with colors which match the chakra areas. Yes, you already understand to, to use them for that purpose. So you can also ask them, how are you doing? Do you need cleansing? Can I can I use you today for this particular purpose? And so you may want to switch up. If one stone you've been using a long time, you may want to switch up and use another stone with a similar color, for example. Things of this nature. So if your if your crystal has been already programmed and has certain energy in it from other uses from other people, then you can either find different ways to cleanse it. There are different sources, as you know, about cleansing your crystals. And then you meditate with it a little bit and you can first thank it for being there with gratitude, treat it with gratitude, and then tell the crystal that your intention is to, for example, if you want to communicate with somebody who is a little bit distant from you, or you just want to connect your mind with somebody and sync it together, you can put an image of you and that person next to each other and put this crystal in the middle and you can use your pendal and you can sort of communicate in that way to them. Can you see my hand movement? Yes, I can. Yes. So you can bring a communication of, of a beautiful communication between you and someone else you want to communicate with or just to send them some good energy. So we do the same. We will take a crystal and we will first thank it and communicate with it and breathe it in its energy and, and give what we can to them that they wish from us. And then we will say, uh, is it acceptable to you that we send a message through you? And then we will think of the other person and then we will send this message. It is just a way to communicate. It doesn't always have to be that way, but somebody who's a little bit more distant, uh, telepathy may not work as well. So therefore it is a use for communication in that way at times. But we're just explaining how you can program a crystal. And then you can also have a beautiful crystal and just say, I just want to enjoy your company. And this is, I'm very joyful to be around you. And I want to just enjoy your cleansing light. And thank you very much for your cleansing light. And thank them for what they give and what they do. Because they are, you can, you think of them as living children. If they, if you saw each of your crystals as a child or as a puppy or as a cat, or anything where you find joy in something living. And so when you walk in the room, you attend to your children or to your pets or to your birds. So attend to your crystals as though they are living beings because they are. And they would like that kind of give and take with you more often. I mean, you are already doing that, but consider them with this image and then your relationship with them might deepen and you might find yourself communicating even more and even more deeply. And then they will tell you, you know, we would like to send our energy over here today, or you can use us to cleanse this chakra today for this particular person. So you will have a communication that is much more open and free with time. Or I did say with time, did I not? It can be tomorrow if you believed. I am was listening to your last guest. But it is for the most humans difficult to make that kind of quantum jump in belief and manifestation. Therefore, I say it is possible right now. But until then, until you can make that jump, then just allow yourself to believe that that kind of communication 
and relationship with your crystals is more than possible. Well, I do refer to them as family, and anytime I get new ones, I thank them for joining the family. <laughs> there you go. Beautiful. Very well. <laughs> and thank, thank you, you so much. Very well. You're thank very, you so much. very welcome. I hope that brought some joy. I can hear it brought some joy. Absolutely you? did. <laughs> thank you. Oh, very well, very well. That makes me happy. Okay, is there any other question for me? Yes, there's a question, and um, I'm going to ask, and you may or may not uh, want to answer it, but here it goes. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think, this is from Uriyaman Shukla, the question is, what do you think about the automobile industry on Earth? Which car company do you think is going to be a big player in the emergency, or excuse me, in the emerging electric car segment? Hmm. I will only say this, that, and this is something who the person asking already knows, uh, there has been the ability to produce cars without a carbon monoxide emissions already for a long time. And we are waiting for the day when this technology will be available for all and all cars will be built with different forms of energy use without hurting your atmosphere without you having to breathe this into your bodies. So we will say that this is a certain sadness for us to see this. It was inevitable that the automobile was going to be discovered and built. It was. Uh, as you follow your history of movement throughout your planet, yes, there's always been a desire to go past walking to moving on animals to building carriages and wagons and then bicycles ah, and eventually the automobile yes and then your airplanes is always this this will always has always come back and always there is effort to make new technology to keep moving and moving i forgot to mention trains as well i cannot tell you which automobile industry will be on the leading edge because you will go and you will buy the stock. That's why you are asking. <laughs> yes, I am joking with you, my dear. You cannot hear me, can you? This is a not a live question, is it, Karen? I... Uh, it was, no, they can hear you. It's a person from the YouTube chat, so. <laughs> Very well. I was making a joke, but I cannot tell you i do not know i cannot tell you the second part of your question okay perfect uh the uh uh the, wendy has a i think this could be our final question but wendy go ahead you have a question hi arusha this is wendy thank you so much for being with us today wendy hello hello lovely <laughs> it's been a while do you since remember we've... me of course I, me? of course it's been a while <laughs> since we've spoken um and i wanted yes, to thank yes. you and our pleiadian family for all of the love and guidance that you help us you know help us through and and really my question or or maybe it's more of a a, a comment but um in in the idea of joy i mm -hmm. as we as we here on earth um, have come to face challenges um, to challenge ourselves, I have found that as we enlighten um, and lighten up on ourselves a little bit, and yes. I love and I love wordplay. And one day mm -hmm. I heard from, and I think it was from you guys, <laughs> um, <laughs> that that the word joy is in every journey, and it begins and ends enjoy and because it begins in j-o and ends in y and i just thought that was kind of funny and but i wanted to ask you you know we did come here to face challenges on purpose and i know sometimes from a different perspective it's hard for other beings to understand what it really feels like to come and feel the experience of being completely disconnected from source. And so this is what we came to understand and I believe to come out of and become aware of that we are always connected to source. And so my real question for you is what, what tidbit could you give us when 
sometimes these challenges that we face on earth in that moment can feel anything but joyous <laughs> and that we how can we quickly change our perspective and see even that darkest moment in a perspective of joy you know that we came to experience on this journey i was just wondering if you could comment on that yes we do understand <clears throat> what you go through and why we do however many of the emotions that you suffer with and i mean all of you are quite unnecessary and i mean this in the kindest of ways i mean this in the most understanding of ways i do however and i know that this sounds that we don't understand but we do we do however it is possible and you said it in your commentary the disconnection from god if that connection is always there, if it is possible to pray through the hardest of times, like your saints have done in your history, then it is possible to feel the hope and the power to come quickly out of your despair. This is, may not be the answer you were hoping for, there is benefit in all that happens to you. There is benefit in all of the turmoil. There is ultimately restoration and growth in all that is experienced. I do ask your forgiveness, dear Wendy, because I believe you were hoping for a quicker solution. Nope, not at all. Actually, I know the answer is the, the answer you gave is perfect. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, uh, thank you. And I, I do feel, I do feel bad because I know that when someone is in the midst of despair, all of these words become intellectual and seem ineffective. They do. I would say to regain the perspective that I have shared with you if you feel so lost that it is impossible to regain it on your own, then to do the hardest thing when one is in despair, and that is to reach out Ouch. to someone else. Yes. To reach out and to share and to talk. <sighs> walk and to do anything to shake it and many times many of you take responsibility for people around you that you do not have to take responsibility for and yet you take responsibility for them and many times you take control for things that you have no control of and so you add to your own burden in this way which is one reason we say that a lot of your despair is unnecessary now this is different from taking responsibility for people who are homeless for example yes they have made choices and have come to that point but this is not what i mean i think you know what i mean i think you know that we take control or we take responsibility for people in our lives who we do not need to take responsibility for. Do you understand what I mean? Absolutely. Yes, this is what I mean. There are acts of charity that is very different from taking responsibility where it does not belong. This is what I'm differentiating. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for any? your thank you for your yeah. perspective. Much love. Much love. Thank you. Thank you. 
So we're at the top of the hour now. So if we can, we'd, we'd like to uh, tell you thank you so very much for being here and bringing your joy and your love and your energy. Um, and we'd also wish you well. And we're going to ask you if Safira can come back now so that we can close down the, the webinar. Ah, it has been a great joy to be here again. Thank you to all of you for gathering. And please share your joy and support with each other. And if you notice that one of you is a hard time seeing the joy in all things, well, by all means, please be a friend to them and help them to have, again, hope and to be able to stand on their feet once again. So yes, this is other-centered. This is charity. And I don't mean charity in a way that is painful to the other one, but a charity nonetheless, which is a beautiful thing. So thank you very much. I will go now. Namaste. I will be back soon, I hope. Well, you're always welcome. So. Namaste. <laughs> they never really want to go, you know. Yeah, I they're not gone. That. She's not gone, but she. Yeah. Uh, hello. Well, welcome back. <laughs> thank you for the, thank you for the very nice channeling and uh, sharing your, your, your different uh, beings with us and answering all of our questions. I'm cold, so that's why I look like I'm wrapped in a blanket. <laughs> it's a oh, little that's fine. So I, I had never channeled Corey before. That's why I was getting the message that somebody who I don't know or haven't channeled yet. Um, you welcome, Reinhardt. You welcome, everybody, uh, who's saying something on the side there. But, um, yeah, but I'm, I'm so grateful for Wendy for confirming that because, um, you know, somebody who is just getting back into it, it's so nice when people confirm the message that it's not just coming from my head or uh, when I channel in another group, somebody can see who I channel, which is pretty awesome. I love that. Uh, so these things are, are all very encouraging. Yes. And they would encourage everyone to try to channel in any way, shape or form, be it writing. Uh, like Wendy said, we didn't touch on that enough, but you know, writing is such an amazing way to channel information. Even, you know how sometimes novels like um, Harry Potter, New Moon, or things that like move the world for better or worse, but nonetheless move the world. I mean, this literature is just such an amazing form of channeling in, in any way, shape or form. And, you know, music, painting, any anything. Um, they, writing it's like, is such it's a accessible thing too because you write all yes. the time so yes. you can even do yes. it on your typewriter i'm not typewriter lord you could do it on your keyboard <laughs> on your computer yes. but it's it's said because yes. people are yes. you, you know you're used to typing your thoughts and letting them through so it's such a very accessible thing and yes. i know that i always when i teach i always recommend starting with writing and when you talk about writing. automatic yeah. writing it doesn't necessarily mean that your hands just independently work outside of you <laughs> hearing the yeah. information and typing it down or you may in fact have that kind yeah. of you know so yes yeah. yes because the other day i was sitting here writing in my journal and i got this incredible feeling in my body it was so amazing and i was going to watch a tv series and then i was like no <laughs> right Right, because we're here now. So I started writing, and it wasn't automatic, like you said, but the message just flows. So whether it's writing or it's all, for me, it's all light language. So whether we're speaking in a different dialect or, you know, doing all those things. So it's pretty inspiring. Anyway, thank Well, thank you, you Safira. And you know what, though? It's equally as validating for me because absolutely word for word, everything you said is things that I've said over and over again about light language so <laughs> you don't know how what a mirror of that validation and confirmation that is 
when you know what I mean for both of us. So that was really yes, amazing. Yes. And that's I mean, we could Thank talk. You. And one of the things that that like the symbols and stuff too that people are starting to write, like the, those light codes mm -hmm. and things like that. So mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll I'll I'll be on a webinar soon too and we'll talk more about that and stuff too. But it was so I just wanted to thank you too for it was extremely validating for me. And the whole Great. The, the whole metaphor of using music is exactly what that was that's perfect. That's exactly the same thing that they've said yes. to me. So it was so great to hear you say that. So thank yes. you. And it's of course thank good you, to see you here today. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be here. And I funny how really funny how things come full circle, cool. huh? I know, I know. It's amazing. Thank you, Karen, for being such a beautiful facilitator. Well, thank you. Thank you. Much. So yeah. just so we can, well, uh, of course you'll be back. So no questions about that. I'm glad you're getting back more involved in human colony after a little break. Thank you. I'm glad to all the thank other you. people who are kind of sort of coming back now. Everyone kind of goes away, hones their skills and right? pops back right? up. Yeah. So that's really yes. good. Um, just for this, just for, let me just make this announcement. And because while Wendy's here, I'm just going to make the announcement on the class that's going to take place. On, I'm going to read the announcement in the in the way that it was given to me, so that way it won't be. But Wendy, uh, you need to please confirm if it's going to be posted on the uh, different pages and on the website. But the the announcement goes as thus: Come join us Saturday and Sunday, November 10th and 11th, from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. EST, both days, for an unforgettable, enlightening, and healing six hours over two days of channelings, illuminations, liberations, and light language from the from the true light presented by masters and teachers, Reverend Jim Charles, Wendy Wolf, Reverend Angie Speed and Reverend Will Mitchell. Class cost is 111 USD, payment accepted through PayPal. You can email Reiki, will, Reiki with will at gmail.com. And I'm sure this will be on a post so people can get to it easier. In the class, Jim, Wendy, Will and Angie will channel, speak languages, light languages and present the truth uh, present about the true light with channelings from Elijah, Melchizedek, Athos, the emissaries of light collective, various archangels, and maybe others. Well, maybe others. A little catch there. So if you go there, um, it will be Saturday, 10th and 11th. It's two days, 111 euros. So um, dollars. So it's probably very much well worth your time. Wendy, do you want to say anything about it, real quick? quick and actually yeah we, we it just all went together really quickly so um actually we uh you received the same information i did this morning so thank you so much will for putting that all together as quick okay. as you did um so yeah we were getting the dates together so i appreciate uh the the shout out um for all of that so hopefully uh, um any of you that can make it i'm really excited it was just one of those things that once again you know spirit brought us together um, so together. so it's it it'll, it has to be on the website for sure. Look on the Hukalo main pages. Look on Will a uh, Reiki with Will page. Look on Wendy's the Wendy's I'll page. Be sharing it too. So yeah, we'll we'll make sure it and uh, we'll make sure that there's a and I'll put a link in the um, comments section of um on this uh, video today too. Oh yeah, and put the whole ad in the comments of this one. I will. Just I will grab the whole text. And put so it on the yeah, I'll grab the whole yeah. link for everything. Not in the Go chat. Ahead. though. put it in the comments. Comments. Right. so that it we'll, doesn't disappear we'll okay do. yep and for everyone who is not a member of human colony for just a small pittance just a micro amount of ten dollars a month you can support human colony and all of our workings that helps us uh, pay for our uh, website but also our zoom room and to have a little bit extra to uh, do some nice things with human colony you can go to hukalo.org forward slash webinars and you can join the club hukalo and with that you are always guaranteed a spot in the paid webinars with jim which are at least twice a month also if you are not a subscriber to our channel right down there a little button and you can push that we're getting a lot more views and we're, we have subscribers so please uh if you can uh push that button and, and subscribe and then every time we have a new video it will pop up on your screen you'll know when to join in and on fridays we have the channeling class with ian that's on uh, friday afternoon and if you go to facebook and look up 
Hukalo channeling class, then you can join that for free. And those classes are free. And then on Wednesday, Safira has her uh, hangout for people that have been to any of the workshops, but also to people that are just integrating new energies, having questions, hanging out and talking. Did you want to say something about it? Uh, uh, that's what I want to say about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wasn't right. prepared to say anything about it, but okay. Yeah, but if, she has two more things she wants to say. You said in the I message. Do. I do. Okay. Yes. Go two ahead. more things, but thank you. Okay. Thank you. No One. Problem. Uh, Jim is now officially Reverend Jim Charles because he was um, initiated in the Order of Melchizedek. So he is officially, he can say Reverend Charles now. And I believe he said he's going to change his business cards <laughs> to reflect that. Because I know a few people in, in, the, in the chat here, like, well, what was that? That's one thing. The other thing is that um, if you read my, after what Karen posted, when she posted that I'll be channeling today, uh, my a way to reach me and if you would like private counseling sessions with any of these beings then uh feel free that's awesome i work monday i work sunday and monday uh but tuesday through saturday i usually have time so sorry for that yes if you want to contact that's us okay for, yeah. for um private sessions or go to our website you can find all that information in the description also on the YouTube. So it's not mm -hmm. only on the Facebook pages, but it's also on the YouTube below. So, and also mm -hmm. I think she probably has a channeling page on the Hukalo website. If not, we got to make sure she gets one. So, okay, everyone next week. Thank you. We will have Wendy. No, no, I'm so, so wrong. Next week, we're going to have Jim channeling again. And then the following week uh, it will, I'll have to let you know next week. The schedule for November is still not, not clear, but next week definitely Jim will be back. So we will see you then. Okay. And um, much love, everyone. Namaste. And much love. Thank you. Oh, Thanks, and everybody. If you're going to be on, if you're going to be on later tonight, I'm actually going to stay up late. Go over to CW Chanter's, um, CW Chanter's channel. It's going to be myself, Rob Gothier, probably Vashta Narada, who is the artist of a lot of the um, beautiful uh, ET paintings, as well as C.W. Chancher. We're going to be talking about uh, what's going on uh, in the spiritual world a little bit, talking a little bit about discernment, talking about uh, ethics and channeling, and also some of the things going on with the SSP and um, the Cory Good saga. So we'll, we, we'll oh, where is that? that? Where do we find that, honey? Where do On we the find CW, that? CW Chanter, CW, C period, W period Chanter channel. Uh -huh. It'll also, uh, I'll also put it into the Hukalo 2 uh, stream once that's up. But tonight at 7 p.m. EST, we'll be there. Uh, the four okay, months. cool. Yeah. Wow, enjoy. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it'll be a nice chat. So. It spontaneously has come about as of today. Yeah. So, yeah, we didn't know. But anyway, much love, everyone, and we will see you. Thank you. Next week. I Thank want to do what Kevin Moore does when he snaps and the thing goes off. So I'm going to try it. Ready? We'll see you okay. next time.